Do you ever go to bed, sleep eight hours, but still wake up tired? One in three Americans say they are sleeping worse this year. Very few of you out there are consistently getting five hours sleep a night. I was constantly tired. For a long time, I had a really troubling relationship with sleep. Not only would I procrastinate on work during the day, I'd even procrastinate on sleep. During those times, I had to force myself to wake up early and power through the day with just caffeine. And so it wasn't until the past couple of years that I went on a journey to figure out how to get the best sleep of my life. As it turns out, there's even a reason why your sleep schedule tends to get later and later. And there's even a simple way to fix it. It wasn't until I understood these eight myths that I had about sleep that I began to understand how to have amazing sleep on a consistent basis. So if you're like me and you believe some of the things in this video, I'm sure this will absolutely help you get better sleep tonight. The first misconception actually blew my mind when I came across this. And that's the idea that our circadian rhythm is only 24 hours. In 1972, a French underground explorer, Michel Siffre, enclosed himself in an underground cave for an experiment. For the next seven months, there was no sunlight, no clock, no cues to the outside world. He completely relied on his body's instincts to eat and sleep. And what the researchers found was that even without any external cues, his body had an internal clock. You live following your mind, you know? It's only your brain who function, you know? Then you have, a, a, it's black. You have not the alternance of sleep of a day and night. At a certain moment, you decide you are awake. It's curious. But the surprising thing was, this internal clock was not 24 hours. It was actually 25 hours. Okay, pause. This probably answers a question that you've had for a very long time. It's the reason why your sleep schedule keeps getting messed up. Have you noticed that your sleep naturally tends to get later and later? It's because your body's internal clock isn't actually aligned to 24 hours. You see, I bet a lot of your daily routine isn't that far off from this French explorer. You probably work from home, maybe order delivery, and probably spend most of the day on your computer or phone. So how do we regulate our circadian rhythm to 24 hours? It's not work, it's not school, it's sunlight. So in our brain, there's something called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. When sunlight enters our eyes, that part of our brain determines what time of the day it is. And based off of that, we'll release hormones to tell your body what to do at certain times, like falling asleep. So you're probably thinking, why is it only sunlight? Why can't the lights in our room regulate our circadian rhythm? Well, let me just show you. This app right here allows you to see how many lumens are for different light sources. This lamp here, 2600 lumens. Studio light, 7,000. Whoa. 30,000 outside. And even on a cloudy day, you'll find that you'll get way more light outside than you do inside. Scientists have found that only through sunlight does our suprachiasmatic nucleus recognize that it's daytime. So in order to fix this, what do you actually have to do? The first is to go for a morning walk right when you wake up for 30 minutes, if not an hour. You also wanna regularly go outside during the day. For me, I like to go for a walk in the morning, one after lunch, and then another one when the sun is setting. This will cue your brain to feel sleepy at night and alert when the sun is up. The second myth is that good sleep is about what you do in bed. I used to think that good sleep is about what's happening when I'm actually sleeping, like how comfortable my bed is, how to relax my mind. And I've even tried a bunch of breathing techniques, mouth taping to try to get better sleep. But after talking to and learning from several sleep experts, it's about what you do during the day just as much. As I talked about earlier, viewing sunlight throughout the day and in the morning can help regulate your circadian rhythm. But there's also many other things that you can do that will help regulate how well you sleep. For example, are you getting enough exercise throughout the day, eating healthy, drinking enough water, and avoiding caffeine past 12 p.m. These are habits that are just as important to be doing throughout the day if you wanna have good sleep. And even when it's two hours before you sleep, you should already be winding down and shutting off your light, turning off your computer, and getting ready for bed. Personally, I also use these blue light blocking glasses, turn off my computer an hour or more before bed, and avoid using my phone, just so I don't have any other cues tricking my brain into thinking that it's still daytime. But if your problem is that you're constantly sleep deprived, you probably also have the misconception that you can just sleep in on the weekend and catch up on your rest. So myth number three, you can sleep in on the weekends if you aren't getting enough sleep. I used to be guilty of this as well because I would always wanna get up at 6 a.m. and work out before I go to school and later work. I'd often set an alarm cutting my sleep short, figuring that I'll just catch up on my sleep on the weekend. But actually the science shows that it takes more than a week to fully recover from sleep deprivation. A new study in Japan showed that it takes nearly three weeks to fully recover, not just the weekend. So anytime that you cut your sleep short, you're potentially ruining your sleep for the next month. After I understood this, I never stay up late to finish work. 
I always just go to bed on time and wake up earlier instead. And I find that actually I feel more refreshed and I can finish it more efficiently. So if you're waking up tired and you have to rely on coffee to function, just keep shifting your bedtime an hour earlier until you find that you can wake up refreshed and not have to rely on caffeine. But you actually don't want to take this to an extreme and that leads me to the next myth. It's always better to sleep more. I used to always think that it's better to sleep as much as possible and to always sleep in. But once I started to track my sleep precisely along with my energy levels, I noticed an interesting pattern. If I slept in, it would actually harm the sleep that I would get the next day. One reason is that because there's a deviation in my sleep times, it would be harder to go to bed on time that night. And so my sleep efficiency would decrease. In a report from Harvard Medical School, there's a connection shown between too much sleep and a decrease in energy. Deviating from your normal sleep pattern can upset your body's rhythm and cause daytime fatigue. Remember that you're optimizing for sleep quality, not sleep time. So you want to increase the efficiency, not the duration. Look at this graph. This shows self-reported sleep time on the bottom and all-cause mortality on the left. You can see that it starts out high, which means that your risk for health issues increase if you sleep less than seven hours on average. And once you sleep between seven and eight hours, it kind of levels out, but you'll see that it rises again when you sleep nine to 12 hours. So more sleep isn't actually linked with better health outcomes. The best approach is to figure out how much sleep you need a day to feel refreshed and to aim for the exact same sleep time and wake up time, regardless of what day it is, which leads me to talking about the optimal sleep time. And the next myth is actually something that I heard from my mom almost every day when I was growing up. And that's the idea that you should go to bed at 10 p.m. So there's actually something called sleep chronotypes and it's separated into four types, bears, lions, wolves, and dolphins. These are your natural inclinations for your body to want to sleep at a certain time. And it also tells you when you function the best. What's interesting is that your chronotype tends to shift as you get older. So if you're a teenager, you probably have the inclination to go to bed late and also wake up late. I remember how difficult it was for me to wake up at 7 a.m. in high school. It's kind of like the same as if I had to wake up at 3 a.m. now. But even though it shifts naturally as you get older, personally, I found that I've been able to deliberately shift my sleep schedule just by sticking to the same bedtime and viewing sunlight at certain times of the day. My natural inclination is to sleep late and wake up late. But because of the protocols I've implemented, I'm able to wake up early and also feel refreshed. Rather than going to bed at 10 p.m. each day, your optimal time might be different. Consistency is far more important than timing. And that leads me to the next myth. All sleep is equal. Because our sleep functions in multiple stages, depending on what stage you're at, you might be ruining your sleep dramatically. If you're cutting the last two hours of your sleep, yeah, you're only cutting two hours short, but because of the crucial function of REM sleep, you might be ruining your sleep efficiency by 40%. Let's say that you normally go to bed at 10 p.m. and you wake up at 6 a.m. But tomorrow morning, you've got an early morning flight. So you have to wake up at 4 a.m. rather than 6 a.m. How much sleep have you lost? Well, you've lost two hours of your eight hour night of sleep. So you've lost 25 percent. Yes and no. You've lost 25 percent of your total sleep. But based on the structure of sleep that we just described, you may have lost 50, 60, 70 percent of all of your REM sleep, all of your dream sleep. Studies in Japan have found that the first 90 minutes to be the most crucial indicator for how good your sleep will be, where it's observed that this is a time where your body releases growth hormone, consolidates memories and things you've learned and even increases your immunity. But in order to get a high quality of sleep in the first 90 minutes, it actually starts with your last meal. And that leads me to the next myth, which is the idea that it's easier to sleep on a full stomach. This would lead me to eating super late at night after studying or after work later on. But even though I would feel satisfied and it would help me get to bed, the sleep quality itself wouldn't actually be that good. So it would leave me feeling tired the next day. It turns out what happens is that when you eat close to bedtime, you're actually activating your metabolism to start digesting the food. This increases your heart rate and activity in your body. So it becomes really difficult for your body to have proper rest. So what I found out is that it's actually better to sleep fasted because then your body isn't actually digesting food. And so you have a lower heart rate and you have higher sleep quality. The hunger might bother you initially and you might have trouble falling asleep. But once you actually fall asleep, the sleep quality itself is much higher. Brian Johnson, who I talked about in other videos, actually has perfect sleep scores of 100% every night. He actually stops eating around noon just so his body has enough time to finish digesting the food. This definitely might seem unrealistic for some people, but it's something that I'm trying to work towards to move my last meal earlier and earlier in the day. Personally, I've just observed that a lot of entrepreneurs who are really into optimizing their health also shift their last meal earlier in the day. And they even limit when they drink their last sip of water so that they don't get up and pee in the night. And I've tested this on myself and noticed the same thing. If I stop drinking water at two to 3 p.m., I won't get up and pee in the night. And the earlier I eat dinner, the higher quality of sleep I tend to get. But the next misconception is actually one of the most important. And it wasn't until I understood this that it really cleared up my anxiety around getting better sleep. And it's the idea that 
Once you fix your sleep, you don't have to worry about it again. In a podcast I listened to featuring the founders of 8sleep, which is a company that makes a temperature control mattress, they talked about the idea of something called sleep fitness. And that's the idea that our sleep isn't something that we just fix once and then it's done. It's something that we have to continually work out and get better, similar to your progress at the gym. So it's okay if you don't sleep well one night because you'll keep working at it the next day. And even if you get a few days of bad sleep, it's totally fine because you'll keep improving your protocol and see what works and what doesn't. And through testing so many different protocols and even investing money into tracking my sleep, I found that one of the simplest things that I can do consistently to get better sleep is to walk for 10,000 steps a day. I've been doing it for three years now and there's actually a ton of benefits besides just better sleep. If you're interested in that, I made a video here where you can check it out. I'll see you in that video.